Okay, I've gotten this cleaned off. And we want to talk about volume now, but just a little bit different way. So we have volume. I just gave you a formula. Volume equals length times width times height. Now there's another way I want to explain the same formula to you, but so that we can use this for different shapes. So volume is also volume equals the area of the base. And I'm going to explain this times height. The area of the base times the height. So you got two things. You got the area of the base to know. And you're going to multiply that by the heights. So if, as we look back at this formula, see length times width in our quadrilateral the length times the width is the area of the base of that shape. Since the base was a shape like a rectangle, the length times the width was the area of the base and we simply multiplied it by the height. So I'm giving you this way of thinking about it because if you get a shape that's not a rectangular shape, like our box, if you get a different shape, length times width won't work. So more generally speaking, you say the area of the base times the height. So how do we work this? <coughs> Now you're going to see how all of these things we're talking about are actually integrated. <clears throat> so what if you had one of those kind of uh, different fish tanks that are popular and it was like this shape where it's going to sit on a small table at the corner of a room. <clears throat> the fish will be in here. And you have water in there. <laughs> and you have some gravel, just like before, some little plants. It won't be shaped. I'd have to say figure, not to scale, because I wanted this to be like a perfect cylinder. So I didn't do it that way. So it really, it would have been wider up here to match the bottom. So let's pretend that. It is a good shape, not this one I drew at first. And this is what you're going to fill with with, with uh, your water, your gravel, and your, and ultimately you'll put a couple of fish in there. <laughs> so now to find the volume that you need, how much water this will hold, See, you, you don't have length and width because the shape is circular. So you have to go to a different formula. So now that's why I'm giving you this. So since it's a circular shape, you got to find the area of this circle. So what's the formula for the area of a circle, which we talked about a couple lessons ago? Well, a circle... I would review it, C-I-R-C-L-E. The circumference of a circle, which is similar to the same idea of a perimeter, the circumference, remember, is pi times the diameter. Pi is 3.14, right? You remember that, or well, hopefully you do. So that's pi, 3.14. The diameter would be the distance across this whole space. So let's say that's uh, 10 inches. That's kind of a big jar. Let's say it's five. 
Now I had a little interruption, so I, so I think we were saying, let's say that the diameter here is five inches. Let me change that from the diameter to something else to make it a little bit easier and we'll review at the same time. Let's say the diameter is, is not five inches, but it's the radius that's five inches. So the radius is five inches. And if you recall, the, the relationship between the radius and the diameter is the diameter equals two times the radius, or the diameter is twice the size of the radius. So if this is a 10 inch, let's say it's 12 inches high. So it fits on your table, but it's only a foot high and you got, it's big enough. So you got a two fish in there and a, and a little air bubbles coming up here from your little air thing to keep oxygen in the tank so they won't die. So they can breathe fresh air all the time. And you got your little pump down here. So you, you, your water's bubbles are pumping and it's coming out. The fish has sufficient oxygen. So it's a 12 inch jar cylinder and a five inch diameter. So the question I have for you is how much water can you put in there if it goes up to 11 inches? And that leaves you one inch for extra air to accumulate on the surface. So there's always plenty of oxygen that can go into the water. So the whole thing is 12 inches, but you're only going to go up to 11. So now the volume is the area of the base times the height. So how do we find the area of the base, which is a circle? So we know that the area of a circle equals pi r squared. That's what we know. So see, length times width won't work on this shape because it's a circular shape. It's a cylindrical shape. And this applies to a rectangular or a square or quadrilateral shape. So that's why I'm talking about area of the base. So if you have different shapes, you need a different formula. So the area of this circle, the base, will be pi r squared, pi meaning 3.14, Radius is 5, so radius squared is 25, if you follow me, because radius squared means 5 times 5. So now I have 3.14 times 25, so we just do that. So we got 3.14, put the decimal on the top, which is a little bit easier all the time, times 25. 5 times 4 is 20, carry my 2. 5 times 1 is 5 and 2 is 7. 5 times 3 is 15. Now I'll move over. 2 times 4 is 8. Put the 8 under the 7. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6. If you wanted to put a placeholder here, you could have. It's always nice to be careful. So if you wanted to put a placeholder there, you don't need the zero, but it keeps your work lined up, which is better. So now I add 0, 15, carry 1, 6 and 2 is 8, 6 and 1 is 7. So I got 7,850 uh, square Nope, I don't have 7,000 because I make, I'm making a mistake that I would caution you. So my number doesn't have a decimal point, but I know it's right here. Because if it's not visible, I know it's here. And my problem had two decimal places, four and one. So I have to count off two spaces in to get my actual answer. So it's 78.5. So I would say the area of this circle base is 78.5 square inches. So now I know the area of the base. 
to find the volume, I only have to multiply that by the height. So this is 78.5. Now I have to multiply that by 11 because I want to go up to 11 inches, which will leave me one inch space for oxygen for the fish. So I have one inch space where the air can go in there, be resting right on the top. So as the fish swims around, the fish shakes the water and the water will break up and allow the oxygen to get in. Of course, you have your second backup just in case the water gets so still, it's not moving, so the air oxygen bubbles can't get in. Your fish might be sleeping. So now that it's sleeping, there's no movement. So this will always keep your water moving and it puts air bubbles right in the water. So that's what it does. So now we have 78.5 multiplied by 11. Easy, because I, 7, 8, 5. Then move over, keep your placeholder, 5, 8, 7. So then you add, you got 5, 8 and 5 is 13 carry 1, 8, and 8 is 16, carry 1, and that makes 8. So I have only one decimal point here, point 0.5. So I'm going to circle that just as a reminder because my decimal point in this number is right here because it wasn't seen, so I know it's behind the number. So I have one decimal point in my problem, so I have to move this once. So my volume I can put 863, 863.5 cubic inches into this space. So my water, my water line will be here. Water being H2O. My water will be there, so my fish will be able to swim in here. <laughs> and I know the volume is 863.5 cubic inches. And I have a nice looking thing, and I can, if I want to put some plants in here, I could put a few plants, leaves on it, plastic of course. If I want to put a little sand, I could put some sand down here on the bottom. Gravel will cover the base and make a nice little scene for my, for my fish. Even a couple of little rocks would do. So now, you know you need the area of the base. So I'm not go we're not going to do another example right now, but I will show you how this would be used. Say if you'd say you didn't like that shape, you had a different shape. You wanted to say, well, I want to have a shape that's a triangular shape. So I want to do it like this. So I just don't, well, the table I have, I want it to fit nicely in a corner. So now I have a triangle, or triangle shape. The height is still 12 inches, but now I have a different base, see? And what's the area of a triangle? It's one half base times height. Not this height, but the height of the triangle. And I'll show you as soon as I will just look at this and, and then we'll stop. So if you have a triangle that looks kind of like an isosceles triangle like that looks like, which it has two equal sides, the base is the distance from the, the bottom, which is the base. The height is the distance up to the vertex. So that will be the height. So you, you need to know this distance here. And that will be given to you. If you were looking here, it's the same as here because it's the same sh shape on the top and the bottom. So that would be, so you'd have the area of the triangle, the base, is one half base, which is be this dimension, the base would be this, 
and the height would be that. So I'm going to write that just so you'll see it. Now keep in mind, you don't have to understand all of this right at this moment because there's nothing happening other than introduction. So this will be base. And this will be height. So let's say if they told you, well, the base of this thing is going to be four inches. Let's say four inches. And the height is going to be three inches. So now you can figure the area of this base, only that, 4 times 3 is 12, and half of 12 is 6. And then 6 times 12 is 72. Okay, so we have 72 cubic, cubic inches. If we had a 3 by 4 base and it was in a triangular shape. See, that's different than here we had a five inch radius and that was a four inch base. So our radius was longer than that base and, the, and a circular shape gave us more space than that because our area here was 78 and this was 72. So if we multiply the 72 times 12, see, we may be able to put more water in here than the 11 that we put in here. We could compare that. So see, our total cubic inches here was 863 because that was 78.5 times 11. So 72 times 12, let's just see. 72 times 12, see which is more. Two times two is four. Two times seven is 14. One, keep my placeholder, one times two. One times seven. That will give me four, six, eight. So 864 for this, even though it's smaller, but we're gonna fill up more water so we got more total. This was 78.5, the base was more area, but we didn't go as high. So we got one inch that we didn't use. If we had gone one more inch, we'd have more water there. So this shape would actually, because you might get a problem somewhere that would ask you to compare two shapes, different shapes, but the volume is not always the same. Like if you get a, a can of Coca-Cola, a 16 ounce can, sometimes it surprises you that it doesn't fill up a glass in your cabinet because the glass has more volume than the can. So this shape has more volume, we just didn't use it all. That shape takes up less space in uh, on a tabletop, but if you fill it all the way up, it's more than the 11 inches here. So now you have what we need to know about volume for right now, especially the concept of the area of the base times the height in case we get different shapes. But as long as you have a rectangular shape, like a suitcase, a box, uh, this dictionary, see, this dictionary, if it was a, if this was a container, see, you could say, I'd say, well, what's the volume here? You say, well, I measured this length, the width, and the height of the pages. See, so someone figured that the height of the, this book would allow you to put all those pages in it. So if this was a, a figure that we wanted to pour something in, we could do that, but by measuring length times width times height. So uh, here's another one. It's not 
drawn to scale, but see you have length times width times height. So we have markers inside. So we could measure how much sand could we put in here by multiplying length times width times height. Because that's a, <coughs> a polygram, polyga polygon <coughs> and it's a square rectangular shape. So that's all. So when you go back over this, you follow your notes, practice the areas on Study Island. <coughs> I'm sure they'll tell you this. So on Study Island, this is what we talked about now is Geometry 5F. I'll write it right here. This was Geometry, G-E-O-M-E-T-R-Y. Five F. So that's what you want to practice. And if you run across things that we haven't talked about, you're not going to worry about it because this is just the second full week of school. So we're doing fantastic. So I'll talk to you later. Be good. Study hard. Stay safe. Bye bye.